One former Wolf holds the longest scoring streak in American Hockey League history. Hadar spins, waits, lets it go. He scores! Yes! Oh, is it a good goal Absolutely. or not? I think it is. Darren Hadar may have won the game in the final second. Hadar into the zone. Hadar tees up, shooting, he scores! There it is! The American Hockey League record for Darren Hadar. 32 games in a row with at least a point. He scored 24 goals and 55 assists in 39 consecutive games matching Wayne Gretzky's 1985-86 scoring streak with the Edmonton Oilers as the fourth longest in hockey history. This to me is one of the most enjoyable things to watch. It's so unreal to watch Wayne Gretzky play like he did. But Darren Hadar, December 26, 2006, the consecutive point streak. 39 straight games out of the gate, which is unbelievable, I think. I've seen a lot of good hockey players, and I'll tell you, pound for pound, he does things with a puck that are, are truly amazing. A guy that uh, you know came and, and, and played every game um, on the ice, you know, like he was last. He was a competitor, uh, not an overly big guy, but really fought hard, point-producing guy that played really, really well in games that mattered. I mean, so impressive to start a season, and in the American Hockey League, your roster fluctuates so much from the beginning of the year, and you're playing with maybe some different people, and to be able to, to start a year with 39 games with a point, I mean, that's incredible. Not one bad night. I mean, the team didn't get shut out. He didn't get shut out. To, to, to find a way to produce night in and night out is something uh, truly remarkable, and then you look at in all of professional hockey. I mean, there's only one person that's had a better point streak. During his time with the Wolves, Hadar was well known for his measured approach to the game. In favor of the Admirals, some nice patience behind the net, and Darren Hadar, a beautiful backhand dish. Two Brett Sterling quickly released and put to the back of the net. In for Chicago, here's a long shot, tap, they score! A wrist shot redirected out of it, Trog and found the net, Hadar there as well. And the Wolves with their third power play goal have the lead. He's one of the guys, though, when he gets out there, uh, uh, he, he, you know, he's, he's not the fastest guy, he's not the biggest guy, but, you know, he's playing three-dimensional chess and everybody else is playing one-dimensional mm -hmm. chess. And he holds the puck and, and foresees things that are going to happen. And, uh, you know, when you're playing with some pretty good players at the time, too. Sure. So when you put that all together, you can easily say why that, that can happen because he's always going to be a, a dangerous player on the ice at some point in the game. A lot of guys are on streaks, and there's not many times when he didn't. Right. Like, he had his points early in the games. There wasn't yeah. many times when, like, you know, he scored in the last minute yeah. or whatever. Like, Coach, I put mean, me on. Yeah, exactly, and you're trying to keep the streak going. He was he was, he so, was scoring his points early, and he scored a lot of points. And here's the amazing thing, though, when I was thinking about it, you know, was like, why wouldn't somebody check him? Right. Just <laughs> why wouldn't somebody, you know, like, like, like once it got up over 30, like, right. you know, the last thing is, why wouldn't you just say, okay, I don't want him to score any more against us, so just go, I don't care what else happens as long as you have score a point. Yeah. It wasn't as if other teams didn't try to put his scoring streak on ice. He gets the puck, he already knows where it's going. Mm -hmm. And where guys are going, he'll lead the passes. So some guys get the puck and all of a sudden now, now they survey, you know, one, two, three, and it's too late. Too late. He's already ahead of the game, and that's what makes great players like Darren Hadar and we can go through the list of, of guys and really when I say go through the list there's not a lot of guys on that list that are that have that view and 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 vision of the game ability to help. he's such a pros pro and even if he were to go a stretch without points you could come up to him and ask him about it and he'd be completely comfortable talking to you without kind of that guarded edge and I think that kind of comes with confidence of, of him knowing that, you know, hey, the, I, I'm struggling right now, but my past indicates that I'm going to get through this and I'm going to produce again. And, you know, you look at Darren's point total. He still led the team in points, and it was a down year for Darren Hadar. Uh, the, the thing that was most unique when he signed to, to go over to Europe and, and look back at it, he never finished lower than fourth on any team that he played for in the American Hockey League in points, and that includes the year that he finished fourth when he spent half the time in Atlanta. He still managed to finish fourth. Uh, that's impressive. Not only did it, he do it here in Chicago, he did it in Milwaukee, Grand Rapids, Lake Erie. I mean, that, it doesn't matter who you put with him, he's going to produce. Prior to his record-setting season with the Wolves, Darren spent four seasons with the rival Milwaukee Admirals. Well, uh, Hadar is a great story because I would see him in Milwaukee and, and having, you know, I, 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 I was in Milwaukee when I started my career. So a lot of the people are still there. And that was my first coaching job and assistant GM there. And uh, 
So when I would go up there, I, I would tell all people I knew there. I'd say, what are you doing? You know, I'm, just, I'm scouting. I said, we're going to take Hadar. <laughs> Darren was a professional off the ice too, and that was another reason he was such a good fit in Chicago. You know, he wasn't your physical hockey player. He just, you know, went out there and you knew he was going to get points every game. And off the ice, he's, you know, gentleman, awesome to us. I mean, he, he knew it, you know, he'd do anything for that guy. There's always fans standing waiting for autographs in the little lobby area there. And, and the, the players come out and they're, you know, they talk and they, they get to know the fans. There's some players like, you know, Darren Hadar, I've seen him talk with people about their personal lives and, and you know, I'm just kind of amazed that that's the kind of relationship that these players have with, with the fans. And, you know, there's, it's, it's really kind of a, a cool thing to see. He was also part of the 2008 Calder Cup winning championship Wolves squad and was one of the two very famous lines in Wolves hockey history. Hadar kicks it a stick. Wants Craig to start. Into the zone comes Hadar. Peels off. Now gets uh, some opening. Dropped it back. Here's the shot by Sterling. He scores. Wolves win. Brad Sterling set up calmly by Darren Hadar. Jason Craw, you know, it's funny being on the other end of the spectrum and seeing him with Darren Hadar and Brett Sterling that first year that they were together and so dominant and you kind of have this preconceived notion maybe of, wow, they must be really cocky because they're so good and they did so much. But over the years, even as a visiting broadcaster, you got to know those guys and obviously it's someone you wanted to interview just because fans in your market would would appreciate what they bring to the table and just so genuinely nice, uh, the love for the organization. And I think the thing that sticks out the most in Krog in particular and Darren Hadar, these guys, how hard they work off the ice. I mean, you see what they do on the ice, but if you're ever to go in the locker room after the game to, to get something or whatever, there they are doing a, a post-game workout, push-ups, sit-ups, riding the bike, doing things, all the extra stuff that you know, guys that produce 100 points you don't necessarily think are, are doing all the heavy lifting too. So I, I think that sticks out, uh, you know, not only their skill on the ice, but as people, how good they are in the community and how they treat everyone within the organization so professionally. Tune in next time as Daring Greatly continues to chart the history of the Chicago Wolves in this exclusive docuseries.